Peace and blessings. I'm Dave Adams and welcome to another exciting edition of The Conscience Presents. Today our topic is a platform for Pittsburgh. We're going to introduce you to Libertarian candidate Mr. Mark Radicus, who's running for not one but two positions for City Council and for Pittsburgh's Comptroller seat. Stay with us. This is going to be a great show. We'll be back in one minute. Welcome to A Conscience Presents. I'm Dave Adams, your host, and we got a great show for you today. Libertarian, what is it? What does it mean? I know many of you have called into the conscience and asked us, what is this libertarian? What does it mean? What, how is their platform? What do they stand for? Well, today you're going to find out. We have today a wonderful person, Mr. Mark Radicus. He's a family man. He has great hobbies. We're going to find out all about that. So welcome, Mark, Hi. to the show. How are you doing? I'm well. Thanks for great. having us. Great. You're running for two positions, city council and comptroller, too. Right. Very different positions, but uh, how do you feel like you're qualified with that? Yeah, the, they're, they're different parts. You know, the, the controller position is citywide, and um, city council is like just one-ninth of it. So, uh, you know, I live on the south side, and um, we're able to um, mix it up with neighborhood groups. And, you know, part of the, the battle is to bring new perspectives to city government, and I think I'm able to do that. So I think I'm vastly qualified because I'm a libertarian. I'm, there hasn't been libertarians or other people elected to city government and I would be able to bring a new voice, a new set of perspectives. Well tell us about libertarian. What, what is that exactly? What does it mean and what do you stand for? I call myself a common sense libertarian. Okay. Now, libertarians are generally people that value freedoms and personal liberties, but we also value the flexibility of having some money in a bank so that we're generally financially prudent. You know, we're not going to overspend money. We're not going to um, go into debt. So when you're um, able to pay as you go or have some money in the bank, you're more free. And what we've done now in the city is we've racked up a ton of debt and um, the overspending big government philosophy is not ours. So we'd prefer to have um, a streamlined government that stays away from everybody else's, um, doesn't invade other countries, it doesn't um, invade your business, it doesn't invade your, um, your household. So it's sort of a live and let live attitude with libertarians. It sounds almost uh, conservative, very conservative, would you say? Well, it, libertarians don't really fit on that scale between conservatives and liberals. We're conservatives in some hands, in some instances, and, but we're very liberal any other way. So um, that doesn't quite fit. We, you know, I have a song that we play in our CDs is Don't Put Me in a Box. So it depends on the different issues. And then in some issues, the libertarians have a lot of debate among themselves. So it's, um, it's not really either conservative or liberal. So, okay, let's say if um, your district votes you in a city council, what would somebody get with Mark Radicus at the leadership position or representative? Well, the thing that I care a lot about is um, kids and, and children. So I would love to be on city council the chairperson of the sports and you know, city parks and youth task force. There's a city park and youth recreational task force, and that's actually chaired now by someone that doesn't really care much about citywide sports and citywide involvement and engagement. And we can do a lot with parks. And they do a good job at what they are given to. But I think the leadership that I'd be able to bring citywide, um, even though it's just my district as far as being elected, but I think we would have things that would be positive for the north side, positive for the east end, positive citywide. So that's where I would really attack. I'd start a youth technology summit. I'd really try to get um, coaches involved. Uh, I think we do things in a city that are often about bricks and mortars, about buildings. You know, they save our swimming pools. Well, and I worked hard on that, or save our rec centers. But really what happens that's special there is the mentoring, the coaching, the, the interaction among your team, the, the, the community building, the learning to play well with each other. And those are things that are um, not expensive, but they're um, very powerful. You know, when, when someone's missing school or now someone needs help with homework or their studies or, or interacting well with the schools and getting moms and dads and, and uncles, you know, to really help with the kids. And we're not um, doing as much as that as we need to. And I know in the suburban areas they have a, a much different approach and, and there is more continuity and um, there's more parent in involvement or engagement, community engagement. So um, I would bring a whole new set of energies and priorities to the city parks efforts. Mark, 
you know this show is, is representative of the African American community. And, and that's a very uh, touchy subject with a lot of our uh, constituents that come in and want to hear just what it is that is going to make things different in our community. Before we go to that, tell me a little bit more about you personally, Mark Rodicus, the man. You have uh, a family? Sure. M my wife and I got married and moved back. I grew up in Pittsburgh. My dad was a Pittsburgh public school teacher and he's retired. My grandfather was a musician and actually started the School of Music at Duquesne. So I've come from a big family of teachers. Mm -hmm. I'm a coach. I don't like the classroom setting for myself, but I've coached swimming mm -hmm. in six different states, and, and I've before was a publisher. I published a lot of books. So I have a journalism background, a communication background, and a coaching background. So um, the sports and recreation are things are um, very near and dear to me, and I've worked in many s settings from around the world to, um, to publishing books from Olympic coaches. Do you have children? Yeah, I have two boys. Uh, they both go to public schools. Eric is a... Um, a middle schooler at Frick, and Grant is um, in elementary at, 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 on the south side. We walk to school at Phillips. They're in the magnet programs, and um, we love to support the public schools. So uh, I've been lucky and fortunate to be a stay-at-home dad at times when the babies were, were smaller. My wife has a, the big job of the family, so to speak. She's um, a director at UPMC Eye and Ear, and she's also a pit pro professor. So um, she has a, a pretty... Um, demanding job and then I'm able to be a little more in the um, support environment mm -hmm. for the family and that's mm -hmm. sort of the way um, we like it we're able to do some some travel with family and, and education and we've gone abroad here and there at times to China to New Zealand and um, the, you know, the family life's important and um, the community life's important so it's been able to give me the flexibility to go out and um, and learn things about the community and, and publish things and um, and really keep a, um, some issues pushing you know the city to better itself hobbies what do you like to do what do you find in your spare time that uh, you really enjoy doing well I like to swim okay. you know, we've done some races I, I like to um, the canoe we put the canoe on the river occasionally okay. and drag okay. it down to the to, and um, mostly you know it has to do with with sports and play okay is it hard to canoe in the river? No, it I've isn't. always wanted to do that. On a windy never... day, it's a little bit up, but no, it's it's fun. As rivers are great, they're they're um, something that makes Pittsburgh somewhat unique. Okay, and um, you know we're aquatic people, so yeah, I like to hang with the guys at the pool, or you know hit, go to Sandcastle, go to the rec centers. You know, um, those are the things that are generally we ride bikes along the bike pass or, or take a trip. Okay, let's get to the nitty gritty. Sure. A lot of people have emailed uh, me and, and asked uh, Mark Rodicus, uh, they, they see your blog. They see you have a lot of things out there, a lot of information that you send out throughout the community. Let me ask you this. Your family is very structured. You have the uh, education in your family. How do you feel about portions of the community throughout the city that may not have that structure, that family structure? With your background and, and your enjoyment with the, uh, the team and the sports and the things like that, how do you see kids in poor communities, uh, African-American sure. communities, that don't have the structure at home, but still need something to do. And we see this in Pittsburgh, especially we hear this in our communities all the time, there's nothing for our kids to do. If Mark Rodicus yeah. was in city council, or if you were a controller, and you had finances to be able to work with, what, what could you do to help communities like that? One of the things I talk about often is a Youth Technology Summit. I, you, Every year, that? every year we should use the convention center and focus on technology. You know, the kids are wired. You know, they're using the iPods. They're, you know, some of them. You know, they're they're using the internet. You know, and it's where the future is, and it's where a lot of jobs are. And and um, the people that are working at the church groups or working with coaches or working with music. You know, and there's not a lot of uh, they need to use it too. So, I would love to have a three or four day summit every year that we could launch that would really talk about technology and it would get involved businesses and it would get involved the, the college and university settings would get involved the, the schools and there's be some competitions and you know, we get the you know the big industry you know from the high tech fields mm -hmm, and the, mm -hmm. the, um, the internet ser service providers and stuff you know so that's one thing and then I think from there we have neighborhood groups so I, I'm a tech guy in a way and I think that's a good way to um, learn and to read online and um, it, we should need to make that affordable and available and accessible to everybody. Well, you know, what, so citywide Wi-Fi and, and some of those types of things 
would be important. You know, and then you get into the arts, you get into the music, you get into sports. Uh, your special interest, you know, we should be able to make you literate in. Mm -hmm. You know, and as, as we do this, we're going to be teaching literacy and we're going to be teaching about science and math as we go. But it's got to be fun. You know, it's got to be new and fresh for the kids. So that's, that's one just little project that I would definitely like to do as far as youth technology. Do you think the city is contributing enough finances to the Pittsburgh public schools for that type of thing that you're looking oh, for? Oh, yeah, that type of thing could pull its own weight. And that's sort of one of my you know, platforms. Is it would be an event that would make money for the city. And we could do it well and, and have, you know, a big festival. And instead of you know, talking about spectator sports, we'd be talking about real participation and, and cutting edge things that we're creating. Are we talking about all kids or just a portion? Yeah, In we're Pittsburgh, talking. Pittsburgh, we see so many yeah. portionate things where I like it left out. What are we talking yeah. about? With, I think it the, sounds like a good plan. Yeah, I think the digital divide is we got to cross that. And, you know, we need to empower all the people and all the kids about how to um, challenge themselves, how to be literate, how to be um, smart in a modern world. So we have to include everybody. And I think there are businesses that would get involved that they know, hey, there's a, a certain little package or program that we could help with mm -hmm. in a certain way. Um, you know, I helped or tried to get the, the Pittsburgh Interfaith Impact Group, the interfaith groups, to put small computer labs inside all the rec centers. Who is that? Well, Pittsburgh? Well, we had a, a, a youth task force. This was some years ago, and it's, we talked about it on the web, and we went and researched, you know, how can we make a significant improvement to the kids' lives? And, um, you know, hey, let's give them some literacy and technology together. And we went to the mayor when Mayor Murphy was here mm -hmm. and said, listen, um, we've got these computers donated. We've got these volunteers ready to help. There's, at the time, I think it was 16 or so rec centers that had space that, for computer labs. Okay. And so let us put four computers in all these computer labs, and we'll do some after-school activities or make it available for homework and mm -hmm. teach parents about the dashboard mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And um, we were told no. The city didn't want to do that. You know, so any reason why? Well, yeah, we found out six months later they wanted to um, play a game of chicken with the politics and the pawns were the kids, and they closed all the rec centers. And Mayor Murphy said, Shh, "No swim pools next summer." You know, so then we had to backtrack. But I, what I was trying to do is engage more citizen participation in these facilities and into the lives of the kids. And um, we've never really got off a of first base on that. We we need to get parent involvement and community involvement and make this accessible. Like everywhere else. Yeah, yeah. And so, and I think, you know, the first technology is important. You know, it's, and that isn't going to work for everybody. Yeah, you know, I think sports is involved. You know, it's important. You know, it's in schools, of course. You know, I have a couple of philosophies about Pittsburgh Public Schools. When you're young, in the elementary grades, K, one, two, three, our schools in Pittsburgh are good. They're very good. Mm -hmm. You know, some are probably better than others, but... It, when the kid, though, becomes in the middle school, age five, grades five and six, mm -hmm. and if a family can, that's generally when they leave the city. You know, they pack up their belongings, they go to a suburban setting. I don't know if it's South Park or Woodland Hills or whatever. They, mm -hmm. they leave because the, the middle school situations get a little more dangerous for the kids. There's a little bit of more, you know, there's more bullying. You know, the learning isn't quite as you know, rigorous as it needs to. And then in the high schools, you know, some of the high schools work. But by and large, our Pittsburgh public high schools need a lot of attention. You know, and so I was hoping to see a lot more occur with this high school reform. And that's one of the other jobs is controller. You're the watchdog of um, the finances for the city as it relates to the public schools. You know, it's definitely a, a school board driven, a superintendent driven school district. But there's this person over here in the city on downtown that has um, a duty to watch the performance and be able to audit schools. And often what we do is get in a conversation just about money. You know, how much is it that school rehab cost? But we, you know, we're not talking about the performance of the kids in, um, in the classroom or in language education or in the, or in the gifted education or, or attendance. You know, so I think there are a lot of things that the schools need to be monitored on that aren't dollars. Well, let's talk about that when we come back. Sure. Mark, when we come back, I want to ask you just about that, the Pittsburgh Public School System. Uh, many feel that it is a entity within itself, that it can't be governed because they make their own rules, they do their own thing. So as controller, let's yes. talk on that end. Sure. How do you feel you can uh, possibly integrate, get in there and, and, okay. and make a difference, okay? We'll be back. Right We're now. speaking right now with our 
platform for Pittsburgh, and we're also here with M Mark Rodicus, Libertarian, running for controller and for city council on the south side, correct? Yeah, so on the why. south side. Let's talk about Pittsburgh public schools, and, and I'm going to bring this into uh, a home where we are. Uh, you know there's a new superintendent. Uh, he's in his, what, second or third year, I believe. He's already got a raise. <laughs> yeah, already. And already did his own assessment, which I thought was kind of crazy. But l let's, l let's look at this. African Americans in the city of Pittsburgh feel that we've been ripped off completely. He has uh, totally disrupted our neighborhoods, removing schools, uh, putting students in, in, in other places. And we're still looking to see and make some sense out of this. Now, you, you spoke about the job of controller. And, and let's, uh, for those who may not be as politically knowledgeable as, as you and I are, what does the job of controller do? And you mentioned how they may be able to watchdog Pittsburgh Public Schools, but we feel that it's an entity within itself, and nobody could come in and control this um, this entity, right. this this Pittsburgh Board of Education. So, as controller, tell us a little bit about the position, what you would do, and how you see that you might be able to make a difference. Yeah, the controller, as our city charter dictates, has a very strong responsibility to be a financial watchdog mm -hmm. on the schools. Right. And you know, we're losing students every year. They're, they leave the district, the district is shrinking. You know, so some of the right sizing programs were very abrupt, very um, hard. There was a, it was a big kick in the teeth to a lot of people. The, some of the students had been in their third school by the time they were in mm -hmm. fifth grade. And they're getting, families are getting yanked around by the district. And that doesn't happen in suburban Pittsburgh. You go to a school, you know that school's going to be That's there right. for the next 12 years. Absolutely. And, you know, they're not going to be opening high schools or closing high schools. Even summer school was closed because they had a, a, a bit of a problem at one of the buildings. So, you know, we yank our families around too much, and we don't allow for, you know, a nice stability. So th there are a lot of ways that the controller can help. One thing that I'm going to float as far as a new idea to you okay. is that we should form a Citizens Congress. And if I'm controller... I'm going to reach out and we're going to get organizers and community activists and we're going to make that controller's office a real launch pad for sustaining discussions, for evaluation, for review, for audits, and then maybe we'll deputize hundreds of people as deputy auditors, you know, and go out and let's work on where are the crossing guards now, where should they be later, let's map out things and really work on all sorts of issues. And I feel that the city doesn't have really easy places to grab onto to really help. The, you know, controller, you know, things are out of control. Mm -hmm. You know, so we need the controller's office to be a place that citizens can get a grip on the city. And that means getting a grip on the schools and getting a grip on the parks, you know, getting a grip on neighborhoods and city government. So, you know, I see this as a way to make the controller's office, you know, and people go into Grand Street and there's this sign on the door. Nobody ever goes in. Nobody ever goes out. You know, there's only 20 employees there. But, you know, and we already have oversight. You know, there's Act 47 over mm -hmm. here and we got the ICA overlords here. You know, so lots of people from Harrisburg and Aldon are watching these budgets. But um, as they do that, I'm afraid that the, the citizens are losing control of the city. And um, so I will make the controller's office very much an open office. We need a new philosophy of as far as open source. We'll have access to records. We'll have access to meetings. We'll um, discuss things in length. Well, well, isn't that available now? Well, the controller's office does very little. You know, they might do some bean conning. They might do some number crunching. The one, con the controller that was there now mentioned uh, he would tax the Cathedral of Learning, and if the Cathedral of Learning was taxed, everybody's tax bill would go down. Yep, some, you know, somewhat ridiculous things. And um, I think we need to have you no know, better organized places where people can come and really get involved and, and make a, an impact on our, our city. So do you, you, you feel that nonprofits don't have a responsibility? Oh, no, I, nonprofits certainly have a responsibility, but, but we need to discuss that. And, mm -hmm. But then it's like all that's all cloaked in secrecy, that we don't know how many nonprofits are really at the table and how much they're given. You know, so that doesn't work for me. You mm -hmm. know, if nonprofits are going to make a donation, sign the check and put it out in the open. Okay. And um, if we're going to start counting on five million dollars one year and three million the next year, you know why? You know, let's let's. I don't want to be begging right. to the nonprofits. 
you know, I don't want to be begging to Harrisburg. And I want us to figure out ways that we can pull our own weight and make sure that, you know, Pittsburgh becomes a viable place so that, in, you know, 10 years or 20 years again, you know, our children will, you know, love us for us and we'll be out of this, this terrible mess. Let's talk about districts now and let's look on the council side. Your district, uh, very diverse. You have the haves and the haves nots. Sure, yeah. In your district. And we're talking up on the hill. Right. You know where I'm talking about. Uh, from your opponent, what is the difference and, and what can an African American voter on the south side in your district, why would they vote for Mark Rodicus? What works for me is freedom and liberties. And and that works for everybody. And it's worked for America for hundreds of years. You know, since you know the days of Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, you know, we've had this American style of government that says you know, allow people to be free and, and they will be able to better themselves and they'll find what works for them and, and make it work. So Pittsburgh now, to use my opponent, can't be in a position where we just give away things all the time. And, and that's happened perhaps in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And, and that's what my opponent wants to do. You know, he knows that the needs in Beltsuver are different than the needs of the South Side Slopes or the needs in Oakland. Sure. But we all need freedom. You know, we all need liberties. You know, we all need government to do its job as far as, you know, being protecting, you know, doing police force. But it can't be giving away this to a special interest group, that to another special interest group. You know, building tunnels under the river that aren't going to pan out. You know, um, there are some really bad boondoggles out there. And, um, uh, you know, so I would like us to concentrate on, you know, freedom and liberties for everybody. And, you know, and that means you're not going to have police beating down your doors for, you know, on brutality type measures. It's, it's um, being able to be personally free. And, and part of that is, um, you know, a, a deep philosophical belief that when we have freedom and people are able to, to, to better themselves, that they will. Mark, how many black business do you have on Carson Street in your district? Geez, very few. Why is that? Or let me ask you this. Maybe that's not a fair question. Let me ask you this. As council representative for your district, what could you do to, and I ask this question to city council, so let me take it back. I ask every minute, member of city council, you're familiar with the study sure. uh, the University of Pittsburgh came out right. with showing the disparities in the city. I ask every council member at city, at city Hall, what would they be willing to stand up publicly and say to their district to make their district better in closing this disparities gap, this embarrassment to the city of Pittsburgh, you as a councilman and a representative on your South Side District, what would you do to make that gap? I hear people, African Americans on the South Side, constantly complain there's nothing for us to do. Yeah. Well, in the past, I have walked the picket line, so to speak, when the construction or the new stadiums happened, and there was a black, you know, union of workers, you know, and I was with them, and the pass-throughs that occurred, you know, in past administrations with past projects that were just not right, and we needed to to be monitoring that, and we didn't have real good access to to um, government records and government spending, which I think we could see so that we can really. Um, understand you know where the minority contracts are and where they're not and where they're just a sham you know so um, I've been fighting that fight in my ways you know in the past times you know three four five you know up to ten years ago so businesses you know to, to your question you know perhaps it's how do we Fight that? I, I think we have to fight it, you know, with the, the kids. How, how do you help yeah. your, your, you, you your black constituents in your district to get involved in what's going on in the big boom on that district? I've gone over there several times, and I, and I, I, I love to go shopping. I look for a black business or a black business owner. I think there's one. Yeah, th there are I believe a few. there's one. And I'm just, when I talk to your people in your district, black people, who say there's nothing for us to do. It's even hard to get a job because it's still that little mom and pop mentality there on Carson Street. You know it, everybody yeah. knows each other. They hire their family or this or that. And there's a segment of the district that is left out from all the booming 
enterprise going on in the South Side. As a representative, do you see any way or do you have any plan of making sure that everybody gets involved in that process? The best way that I see it is not to do giant city projects that take all the money for tunnels under the river, you know, for new stadiums or convention centers that are going to, you know, collapse and wobble, you know. And if we're not spending big sums of money on things, then we'll be able to focus on the, the families, the smaller issues, the small kids, and we'll give kids a great education here in the city. They need the resources. We'll give them access to recreational centers. And they'll be able to learn and grow and do as well as everybody else throughout the county. And um, you know, there's, a, there's a, a, a layer of poverty here that is, is huge. And it's about a lack of opportunity. I think we have to grow our kids out of that and let them know that they're as strong and powerful as anybody from South Park or North Allegheny or anything else. And we need to compete against those kids, you know, in our school sports and in our um, extracurricular activities. You know, so I'm of the mind that we empower these kids and give them the best love and care and treatment as we can. You know, we get government out of the way as far as doing massive big ticket spending. And um, Pittsburgh will start to heal itself and will grow out of this by, um, by having... Um, you know, freedom and flexibility and, and liberty. And, um, and there are other aspects of um, when you talk about blight or we talk about, you know, some of the neighborhood issues that come out, there's abandoned properties. And as a libertarian, we have an approach for that too. And it sort of changes the tone, but um, I'm a big advocate of the land value tax. And when you tax the land, it is a way to encourage development everywhere as opposed to the building. And it gets technical, and I don't know if it's really the best thing to talk about it, you know, on a TV show. But you know, with the internet, we've researched this and we've understand it. But right now, if you have a dilapidated house, and then maybe you even knock it down, or the roof's falling in, the sidewalks all cracked, you go to the county and say, "Listen, my, you know, my house isn't worth this. You know, it's depreciated. It's it's what's you know less." So government then gives that person a tax break because yeah, the the, the porch is falling apart. Meanwhile, the other neighbor, he fixes up his house. He gets it painted. He, he makes sure the things are working. He adds an addition. You go to government, and that person's penalized because it's, we're taxing the building. And that means what I would like to do is tax the land. So that if you have a, a surface parking lot, you're going to be taxed the same as somebody that really fixes up their properties. So, and we've seen this in, in Pittsburgh's legacy, and we've seen it in other cities, and, and actually that's one of the reasons why downtown is so dense with high-rise buildings. The land was taxed, and you were able to build up, and it made for a beautiful um, downtown setting, but it also made for very affordable houses in the neighborhoods. I want you to think about this. What I'm not hearing, and what people want to know, is as a representative, and I want you to answer this, I want you to give you a minute sure. to think about it, we're going to take a break. What can you do as a representative, or what can you suggest? What would you suggest to the mayor when you're looking at young people who are locked into maybe public housing and don't have the resources to become a part of this giant boom happening on the south side? What would you do? What would your plan be? Because we don't want to hear about the city. We want to know what would Mark Rodicus do to get us involved in this program. We'll be right back. Welcome back to A Conscience Presents. We're talking about Platform for Pittsburgh. We're talking with Mark Rodicus, who is a Libertarian candidate for City Council, which is on the south side of his district, and also running for the position of Comptroller in the City of Pittsburgh. Right now, we're looking at the City Council side of what we're talking about. And what the question is, is those people who are locked in his district and are not a part of the big boom in south side, the you know, south side works and everything going on, it's pretty expensive down there to go and eat. How do you get these people involved in the district? How do you get those African-American, the young people who are locked in public housing and the people who are complaining that all this is going on and we're not a part of it? Mark, tell us, what do you have as a yeah. plan? Well, citywide policy, I have to go back to the, to the land value tax. And people that will see development spread because the, the taxing policy right now is punishing those that really want to try to fix up their places. So that would be one thing. And I'm against this mega development. You know, you mentioned the South Side Works mm -hmm. and um, giving UPMC um, 40 acres for their football practice field and doing this 
command and control from the central authority. You know, I want a more organic, a more grassroots styled development. And when we devote all of our attention just to um, these specialized, um, what they often are corporate welfare deals that exclude other people and they're just for big time developers, then um, the city gets that way. It gets very diverse as far as the haves and haves not. So how, would your, how would your organic yeah. platform well, what you do work to get people involved? You, you give it at in, in little bite sized pieces everywhere, and you don't give the whole wad of, of public assistance to these small hand picked developers. Okay, but these, how does that help getting those? Those, those the ones that are now, left out now. How the you, people that are left out now can't compete against them. Like when Nordstrom's or was wanted to come to town, or Lazarus was here, the city had a, a big um, stake in, in Lazarus. And they've since gone bankrupt and gone out of bed. Okay. But n nobody wants to open up a men's shop or a hat shop or a wig shop you know, on Fifth Avenue and have to compete against Lazarus because they got a tax-free deal, they got money from the city for this, they got their own parking garage, and so nobody's going to want to compete with the, the competition that's getting subsidized by big government handouts. When we come back, we're going to talk about how you see yourself in that competition with somebody, I believe it's uh, Crust. Ed Krause, is Ed Krause is running against you, and that's going to be a pretty heavy race. I want to see what your plan is when we come back on A Conscience Presents. Welcome back to A Conscience Presents. We're having a good time here. Platform for Pittsburgh, and we have Mr. Mark Rodicus, who's running for two positions in the city, not one. He's running for City of Pittsburgh Controller and also running for City Council against Ed Cross, and that's going to be quite a battle. Let me ask you this. You and I both are in the campaign business uh, this year, and... Uh, we're up against the democratic machine, they call it in this town. And, and I, I just spoke to somebody who has uh, a very good level of power in this city who told me I'm wasting my time pretty much, that uh, the fix is in, that it's already been decided who's going to be in these positions. So we're kind of going up against the grain, but you've got a pretty tough battle on your hands going up against this guy. Uh, what is your plan and what's your strategy and how do you see yourself getting in there and really making a difference? I use the internet to, to the best of my ability. You know, I blog a lot. This platform for Pittsburgh is online at a wiki. Mm -hmm. It's 2,000 pages of content. What is and, that? Well, it's a way to quickly publish ideas on a lot of different topics, a lot of different places, a lot of different um, issues. Mm -hmm. And so other people that have run for office, I've harvested some of their campaign platforms and put it in there, you know, with attribution and such. You know, so I use the internet as best I can. You know, I... Um, do what I can. I say that I stand for office. You know, I'm not going to run around like a chicken with my head cut off. Right. And um, I'm not going to spend money that I don't have mm -hmm. because I don't want to govern like I don't have. And, and somebody that's going to spend $50,000 or so for a, a job that only pays $90,000 a year or in the mayor's race, they want to spend millions. Bob O'Connor and Tom Murphy, when I ran in that cycle back in 2001, they were spending a million dollars each. You know, so I'll get votes for a dollar a piece or maybe less. But I think, you know, if we can um, network and, but I don't want, you know, a one-party time and, and I want opposition and perhaps we can win with some of our ideas. The last time there was a special election and on the last day we had a, a forum among all the other candidates, there were nine people in the race and um, my opponent agreed with me two times. You know, at the beginning of the race, he didn't agree on anything, but I was able to inject ideas, and, and he says, yeah, I agree with Mark. You know, that's a good idea, and I'm, I support that now. So perhaps Luke is reading my blog. Perhaps Mark DeSantis is reading your blog and getting your crime prevention plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so I think we can win by getting some good ideas out there that are going to take hold. You know, I think it's a crime that we're going to war and putting our young people in Iraq and Afghanistan to getting blown up and they're coming home to places with head injuries and and the loss of vision or eyes because of these bombs and we have to take care of them now and you know the whole war situation you know if, if we talk about it and we don't agree or, or we do agree well we've got to make sure that the good ideas rise to the top. Mark let and, me ask you this if you lose your well let's say both seats what will you do to help the winner yeah. well, move uh, forward? Right. I'm not going anywhere. I've run before. I've lost. I've won some ideas. So the mayor's 311 
response line was an idea that I put forth at a meeting with the Post Gazette. Other people heard it, went into the paper, Bob O'Connor saw it. You know, now it's happened. It's nice. I use it all the time. Well, street lights out, I call 311. You know, so I'm going to run again if I don't win. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a fixture, they mm -hmm. say, in the newspaper, mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, if other people want to come and run, then I will be there and I will help them. This last time, a young man, it's a Tony Oliva, he's running for mayor as a libertarian. We worked together to get on the ballot as, an, as libertarian. It's very hard to do. And then, bang, I hand it off. So he was able to go, and now we're creating another new leader, a guy that's involved in the community. So I'm not going to go away. Uh, there'll be another race. I'm helping Ron Paul for president. That election will be for in the primary in, um, in April. You know, we'll see if he you know, is able to advance to the general election. There'll be other races. Um, there'll be a mayor's race in two years. What seat is more important to you, the most important? I think seat? the most important is um, a citywide seat would be controller because there's a, a real connection to schools and that, you know, to the youth. There's a real opportunity to audit and be a watchdog and, um, and talk about performance that the city just really hasn't had. There's a real um, capability then go to any part of the city and say, you know, I'm your guy and, and this is how we get a grip on the city. So, uh, you know, the controller thing is, um, is especially nice, you know, but it's especially hard to get the word out to all the different districts. So, you know, you're doing a good thing by kicking up um, community discussions, and we need more and more of that to happen. There's not going to be a single debate, for instance, for controller. Mm -hmm. There will only be three or four for the mayor's race, but years ago we had 30, 40 events. Yeah. And um, the neighborhood groups have to come alive, and even though it makes them uncomfortable hearing from people that maybe not, you wouldn't get a lot of votes, but, you know, there's not a monopoly on good ideas. Everybody has some good ideas. Everybody has some opinions. The more we're able to, sh to share, the, um, the better the, the solutions will be. Do you feel you have to cater to the so-called uh, well-to-do and the developers as no. a representative in this district? No, the libertarian approach has very little to do with the, the developers. You well, know, in that case, yeah. here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at that camera. I want you to tell the people in your district without saying vote for me, tell them why they should vote for Mark Rodicus. I'm over here. The, the, um, the kids need a person that's going to care about them. And all, also along that lines, we have to reduce our debt. And we have to get a grip on our city. And I think I offer some skills and some tenacity and some honest, bold, hard facts and opportunity to teach and, and interact that, that others don't. Okay. Sounds good. And if you're running for city council, what are you going to tell your people there? Why should they vote for Mark Rodriguez? Yeah, likewise, uh, the city parks and recreation departments need some new energy. They need a, a good bit of an overhaul. Some of these things don't cost money, but they're just about um, coaching, about involvement with, with, with new volunteers. So I think I would make an excellent chairperson of the city parks and youth policy committee. And for that, and for um, the, the belief in liberty and freedoms that I think we all cherish and we all need to value and make a higher priority, uh, I think I would bring exciting things to the, mem to the nine members of city council. Let me add this in then. What do you say to that mother of three who is working two jobs, doesn't have enough money to go down and Southside works and really do this and do that? What do you tell her? Yeah, that your opponent's not telling her. Yeah. Our kids are growing up and leaving. Those mother of three would like to be in a community where there's opportunity and hope for those kids mm -hmm. to stay. And they leave because they see how things are corrupt or they see how things are not as free and flexible and open as they should be. And after you get a big smell of that or it hits you in the face one day, you just walk and weigh. You vote with your feet. And when I go on city council or if I get to um, a controller or a citywide seat, we are going to start to break that log jam. And we're going to make a place that I want to raise my family here and you want to raise your family here. I want to look out for our kids like no one else on Grant Street. Mark, I want to thank you for coming today. I uh, know for a fact that uh, you are a very uh, loyal 
person to what you do, and I think that's fantastic. You have helped the conscience group tremendously, and uh, I, I wish you luck. And I, I just, do, do, do you feel that <laughs> you have a chance, or do you think you're barking up against a hard thing? Do you think that you can crack? Is there a possibility of cracking this machine? I'm going to do the best I can. And I'm not going to um, get all uptight about it. I'm not going to holler and scream. I'm not going to burn out. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's very important. If people want to help, do what you can. Do you have a team or a group around yeah, there, you? There are people that help and interact with me online or with email. I, I don't put people in an a, a, a interesting position. You know, there's blowback. You know, the, if people come out and help me, you know, they might have problems with their city job or their city mm -hmm. contracts. You know, so um, the support I have is a lot of, you know, under the radar, so to speak. And um, it, I think I am able to get some respect from people, and we'll get some votes. Are they waiting to see if you win, and then, boom, yes, we're, we're out there and we're with Mark because I well. think Yeah, I think if a libertarian <laughs> wins, the city's going to, you know, celebrate. We'll have a, a massive block party. Maybe we'll do it in the Wabash Tunnel, you know, and everybody would be invited, and it would be, um, it would be a lot of fun. Your platform for Pittsburgh.org, what is that? And uh, give us a little yeah, background on that. If anybody has suggestions about how to improve the city, big or small, or improve the state, or state reps, and, or whatever, and the platform for Pittsburgh is a good place to go and do some reading, and then also to do some writing. So you can clip different pieces of different platforms and start stitching them together and see what other people have said and even archiving some of the materials. When people have run for office before and they fall off and they unplug their website, well, there's a good chance that I've captured it. So maybe if they surface in five or ten years, you know, we can build upon that. So the platform for Pittsburgh is a wiki and it's, um, it's everybody's opportunity to offer their suggestions and to comment on others. And can they obtain your CD? You do have a CD, and w yeah. what's, what's on the CD? Yeah, what's generally, the um, when we have campaign events, or you know, right here, at, we're burning them now. Um, there's some music, and there's some messages, audio, that you can play in your car stereo. From you? Is yes, it you on me. the message? Yeah, and the music is from, from friends of ours. So some um, valid songs. One is called Lay the Shovel Down. It's, These are local artists? Uh, some of them are. Some of them are, are out of state. Okay. But um, the local song is um, "We're a Nation of Burgers and Fries." You know, so it's it's an emotional thing, and it's a way to think differently or think again. And um, and then I also put some um, open source software on there, and I burn a copy of all the archives of my blog on there. Like, let's say I wrote something in the past that people remember and they want to challenge me five years from now. I'm giving them a copy of that on my CD, so I can't erase it mm -hmm. from the CD that I give to you. So it's a way to build a little more trust and um, have a distributed environment of some of the ideas. And I put all this stuff into the public domain, you know, from travel photos to, um, to ideas on um, what schools we should open and what schools we should close. You offered us a suggestion that you would like to come into the black community in the 9th District, which I'm running for city council in the district, and go door to door with us. Are you still willing to do no, that? No, absolutely. Sure. You let, yeah, let's, let's, let's go. I'll go by myself. I'll go with you. Because this yeah. is a citywide position that Mark's running for. So you in the 9th District, when we see you, we'll be coming door to door in a couple of weeks. You'll, Mark will be with us. And uh, remember, he's running for controller. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, working with you. And, and best of luck to you. I think this is going to be a fantastic race, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how you handle it yourself and, and take it without burning out, of right. course. Definitely. We'll be right back in a minute. This is A Conscience Presents. Back to A Conscience Presents. This has been a great show. Platform for Pittsburgh. We're talking to city controller candidate, Mark Rodicus, libertarian. And he's kind of talked about what libertarian means. And we're going to finish up here. Mark, let me ask you one more question. you got two beautiful sons. Thank you. How old are they? They're about to be 10 and about to be 13. Their birthdays are this month. Now, you're involved with them in swimming and things like that, sure. the hobbies that you spoke to us about. What do they enjoy about you running for this position? Do they find it exciting? or? Well, they don't like to be dragged to meetings all the time. <laughs> Sometimes they will, but they've met a lot of interesting people. They've met some you know, candidates for governor and candidates for president. and. Um, they see me and hear me on the phone and, um, and interact and such. So um, I think their civic awareness is, is, is huge. Often they'll be in schools and the teacher will turn to, the, to the, my son and says, well, it, do we have it all? You know, what about this Green Party guy? Or who is Ralph Nader and stuff? So they, um, they live 
and they'll you know, get some, some things exposed. And all parents do that um, you know, with their kids, and they sort of get a better grip on things so, um, with their profession. So I hope to be raising well-rounded kids. Well, you're in this political thing so much. When you engage with other parents, do they, uh, do they ask you questions about the campaign, or do they, or are you kind of like an outsider? How, how do you, do you, are there other libertarians in your area or that you uh, deal with every day or that your uh, kids are involved Most of the time we just, you know, go about our lives, you know, trying to do the best we can, you know, interacting at school. You know, I don't bring the politics hot and heavy everywhere I go. Okay. You know, th that does turn people off, and I try not to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, but people read the papers or they, um, they, they read online. So um, it depends on the setting. I, I try not to, um, to overstep the bounds and um, you know, just have good relationships with people. How's your wife feel about it? My wife has a job to do, you know, keep the, the family afloat. You know, she has a different last name than me. You know, I, I do have a tendency to rock the boat. Okay. So, um, but you know, she, she has a, a number of graduate students that she's in charge of, and the, the, the staff and the faculty that interact. So um, she um, she has a lot of support for us, for the family, to do, allow me to do the things that, that we do. Mark, thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoyed having you. Look forward to seeing you winning. Oh, well, that'd be great. All right. Mark Rodicus has been a friend for quite a long time to the Conscience Group and to me personally. And as we are going to campaign and look, you notice one thing that he said over and over again, change. And that's what we, the message seems to be without the city of Pittsburgh, all throughout, change. We need change because it seems like the machine keeps bringing us the same thing over and over again. If we want to see people get involved in this city and get, become a piece of it, and people take ownership in this city, we're going to have to change the way we do business. And that's what it's all about. We're going to look forward to seeing you on the campaign trail as it gets hot and heavy in October. We're coming down to the nitty gritty, as they say, in the campaign trail. I'm going to look forward to seeing Mark in a very exciting battle with Ed Cruss over in the south side. We're going to see some exciting battles for Controller as well. Being a part of two campaigns, that's pretty impressive. So I hope you enjoyed Mark being here today. Now, let's get to the hot and heavy. If you haven't read the latest Conscience newsletter, we're looking for Mr. Ricky Burgess. <laughs> We're looking for Ricky Burgess to come out and open up some dialogue to the community. We're getting emails over and over again of people asking what is going on with the 9th District and why aren't we getting information about what's happening in this campaign. We're looking for Mr. Burgess to come out, battle us, get on to the scope of what's going on. Let's give the community what they need. They're looking for change. You say you got it. I know I have it. Let's get it and let's bring it to them. So, Mr. Burgess, we're inviting you to please come. Come out to the community. Let's get together. Let's sit down in an informal debate. Let's give the people at least an idea of what you represent and what I represent. It doesn't matter who wins. The bottom line is the winner will be the best representation that this district should have in a long time. we got some serious issues going on. We're looking forward to being involved in the process one way or another. So we can't do it unless we get out in dialogue. We need you to come out. Don't be afraid. Bring it to us and let's talk it and let's bring it out to the community. I'm Dave Adams. This is The Conscience Presents. We hope to see you on our next exciting adventure. It's politics time, so don't forget to register. Get ready to come out here and vote because it's time for change. We're looking for the way we do business to change once and for all. I'm Dave Adams. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening.